Well, thanks for having me here again, uh, second time already. Um, does anybody know Nedi? Uh, yeah? Okay, N not too many, all right. Um, thing is, it's a network discovery tool. That's what Nedi, Nedi stands for. Um, I d started developing it 10 years ago. Um, and you can read on the internet where and more about the details. And I also wanted to tell you that uh, I was on vacation a few weeks ago, and you'll see some pictures I couldn't resist putting into the presentation, just in case you're wondering why. <coughs> the background was an indication for that. So what are we going to see today? You might have read in the announcement that um, Nedi has undergone some more changes. Um, more recent addition is uh, stuff in the location and mapping uh, area. We will look at that, but fortunately there has been some more additions, so I can tell you a lot more about what's going on with my little project here. So, what is Nedi? So, for those who don't know Nedi, it's, um, as I said, network discovery. It, it basically uses discovery protocols provided by network devices to get the idea of uh, the, the topology of the network. Um, it's using all those known protocols like LDP, CDP, but you can also do a route discovery. You can also use MAC addresses and then use regex to discover based on that. So basically, Netty crawls through the network just like Google crawls through the internet and collects data. Um, a main focus in the first version of Netty was to locate computers. And as we heard before in a good uh, presentation, that um, a lot about network management and to know what's going on is about tracking changes. So Nedi also tracks computers, where they are connected and how they move around in your network when they change IP addresses and stuff like that. So for those um, basic um, skills of Nedi, you can use it as a security and audit tool. You can do inventory of your IT infrastructure. You can also now, since, I mean, it's based on SNMP, of course, so you can also manage printers or virtual mas machines if you enable it on the, uh, on the uh, supervisors, for example. Or you can simply use it to back up configs of network devices of any kind. So that's basically how we can use it. Um, it's, it's very flexible in terms of usage, but it doesn't try to, to compete with a lot of monitoring tools out there because that would just be, I guess, too much. So it's, it's a li uh, like an addition of other tools. <clears throat> so when I started writing Nedi, um, my main focus was to have a light, lightweight tool. And uh, those who were here in spring may have seen this slide already. I just bring it up because I want to enforce that it's, it's not a big, huge tool. It's very small. I mean, the tarball is still below three megabytes, which is not a lot these days. Um, I designed it for speed. and, and to be quiet and efficient, so it does not spam the network. It tries to be very inobtrusive, just do it quietly, whatever it does. And from the logic perspective, I, I try to aid the networkers to, to have a more, like, to be able to faster manage the network, not to have uh, a lot of stuff they cannot really use. So the workflow is supposed to be actually for the networker. And um, it, it requires some knowledge of regular expressions and stuff like that, but that's sort of standard in open source uh, tools, I guess. So as I told you, I was uh, on vacation in the Maldives, actually, and um, I was quite happy to see a switch uh, at the bar, uh, just like my missus shows you where it actually is. So the thing is, Nedi was designed to also document the network without you having to chase everything and, and update Visio drawings, which nobody likes to do, really. Um, anyway, so I, I figured it might be a good idea to leverage the uh, SNMP location string to define where is this device located. And that actually started 10 years ago now. Um, so it's Maldives, Miru was the island where we were at. It's really nice. Um, that's the bar. Obviously, it's in the ground floor and in the wall rack. So if you have this sort of uh, scheme applied to your network devices, you can start using it 
just by discovering the network, and the rest is automatically there. So this is kind of the dashboard, if you will, for Netty. <coughs> we see here some nice graphs. They're not as extensive as Cacti, but there is an interface where you can hook it up to Cacti if you want. But it's just more like a generic approach to gather statistics, and you don't really have to do anything for it. Here we see the event lock section. Since Nedi discovers the network, there is a lot more to um, events or event log than just syslog. So Nedi also is aware of, for example, if there is multiple IP addresses to a MAC address, or, or if there is multiple MAC addresses on a switch port. Those are th uh, things that might be interesting depending on how tight you want to have your network. So basically, Nedi can detect, also it can detect changes in, in modules, for example, or if a switch has been rebooted, for example, or a firmware change. It's all in there, and it's all aggregated here in those events. And as we see the location strings down here, um, they're coming really from, from those devices, and they're um, now here in the top level network showing us the regions. And as we can see here in my Nedi at home, by the way, uh, only Switzerland is monitored, partially. So if you drill down, let's say to Florida, it's also a place I used to live for a couple of years, um, the events disappear, so there is nothing going on in Florida, at least in, in Nedi here. So we see here the cities of the, uh, where I have devices, supposedly. <laughs> Anyway, so if you go back, let's go to uh, another site that's actually our home. Um, we can see not all devices are monitored, and this access point just happened to go down, so it starts out to be yellow. It will turn red and then eventually alert you that it's gone down. Another <coughs> interesting issue nowadays with uh, voice over IP and, and uh, centrally managed access points is uh, location inheritance. So basically, this means that you have devices like IP phones, which are not managed or not manageable via SNMP. They will inherit the uh, location based on the switch port they're connected to, obviously. Um, also, if it's possible, you'll see here, sometimes you see an extension. Uh, basically, Nedi tries to use the web interface of the phone to pull the extension and the uh, serial number if it's supported. You can also see here my ESXi server in the basement. So that's where I actually developed Nady on. And uh, yeah, it's, it's basically it's supported as well. So you will see VMs and you can track them as well. You can also draw maps. Um, there are several modes you can use to draw maps. This is the geographic mode, which is fairly simple. You place the location onto a, a back background, and then you, you can create maps and also put in graphs automatically and stuff like that. So this is a, a city-level map now. This is a, a, a map you'll find on the web page as well. It's the PSI network. That's where I started developing Nedi. Does, does anybody know what PSI is? The, the Paul Gerry Institute? One? One and a half? Good. Uh, it's, for those who don't know, it's, it's like the CERN, but only smaller. Um, they, we, oh, we, I'm not working there anymore. but. Um, they work closely with the CERN on certain experiments. They have particle accelerators. That would be one here. There is another one here. And uh, as you can see, it's quite a complex network as well. It's, it's like a little village. And uh, it was fun to work there and develop the tool. So anyhow, <coughs> this is a possibility to display the network. And the map is interactive. I can show you in a minute um, what that means. Now, the next step, and it actually was contributed by a community member, um, the idea to, to hook it up to Google Maps, use uh, geolocation stuff, and further enhance the, the, the feeling of uh, location-based or location-aware monitoring or discovery or whatever you want to call it. So going back to Florida, basically it pulled the region, city, and the address of the device. You can just simply click it, and if it makes sense to Google, it will return the coordinates. And you can place the icon on the map, you move it, and then you're done. I mean, this is pretty easy, and, and it will help you to generate documentation, for example. So as we can see here, those are my former 
uh, work and, and uh, places I lived at, and uh, they're all across the German border, so uh, yeah, there's a pattern, I guess. So <coughs> you can use this for documentation. I guess another step would be if, if um, a site turns up red in monitoring, you can click on it and you see how long you have to drive there, for example. So we'll see where this is going. Um, there is alternatives I'm looking at, but um, I guess we have just started um, providing this functionality. Now, this is another view of the monitoring page, the dashboard I showed you before. We see the maps instead of the icons with the same coloring scheme. But one important point that came across now with, um, while looking at this more closely is, is actually the first one here. Legal issues, Google wants money for that. Um, rather than have the user spend money to Google, I would have it spent to Netty or so, but we'll see. So um, I guess I need to address this uh, properly first before I continue uh, pursuing this um, feature. An alternative would be OpenStreetMaps, which um, would be nice too because it's really open source and I guess it, it's the better fit. But um, we'll see where this is going. Uh, input is welcome. <laughs> so maybe we, yeah, we can find a, a good approach how to, we, how to go further. Now, <coughs> um, the map, if you're not using the geographic bit, has been let's say polarizing. Some, some people thought it's nice and they can draw nice maps. Um, some hate it. They, they say it's ugly and all, but I know um, if you look at um, other products, commercial products, they all show you nice little maps with 10 devices and they look really good. Then you try it at your own network and uh, you don't get the same results. It's, um, it's a, I think it's an art to draw proper maps just based on topology and, and you know, not have a, a mess in the end. Um, so, what I tried to do is with, since Ned is aware of which region and, and which location the device resides in, it can draw hierarchical maps, which is a bit different to other tools. But nevertheless, it's not perfect either, and I, I know there is some weaknesses. Um, it's still being worked on, and uh, maybe a small improvement in that direction. Nortel switches, they don't support CDP nor LLDP, older ones I'm talking about. Um, so there is another protocol and it actually made it in so I can draw links on older switches. So the idea here is to have uh, a coherent topology even with heterogeneous network components like you have a mixed vendor network, right? So you can still draw maps or even manage the network. <coughs> This is another example. This is actually this, this Florida region you've seen before. It's a bunch of routers. I just hooked up together and gave them some interesting location strings. I made a little routing network here. And you see it's, it's a ring topology. And, and even to draw that is not that simple. But it shows you easily how you can use it. And you can display here, for example, all the interface IP addresses and have a nice little map that you can use for documentation. In the browser, um, it's still interactive, so you can click on a device and it will take you down to the status of it. This is more like a, an artwork. Um, it actually is based on the data from PSI, so this is uh, the eastern part of this whole network, hence East Network. Um, we see here all the devices in a, in a flat topology, so heavier devices move towards the middle, and we see all the edge devices around the perimeter of the circle. Now, the icons of the devices reflect the temperature of the device. So you can set a threshold, and if it's be above the threshold, it will turn red and grows bigger the more it, it gets over that threshold. It's a nice little map, especially in the summertime, when you're not sure how the AC holds up. Um, so it allows you to also uh, have a look at uh, in environmental uh, parameters of your network. I did some more investigation on my uh, geometric skills. It was quite tough to uh, take all those things out again, but uh, at the end I could optimize the, the maps to uh, yeah, be quite arty. Another approach, it, ma it makes sense on some uh, documentation or if you want to put a, a graph in the corner, 
definitely makes sense to have perpendicular links as well. Maybe not here, but it looks pretty. <laughs> um, another approach, um, we've seen before the weather map from Howie. Um, I had it in there. I, I'm experimenting with it again. Uh, it will never be as good as the weather map, but it's, it's another way of, of um, stay on top of your network's uh, usage, utilization, uh, in a simple way. So this basically comes free with it. You don't have to configure anything. You can just enable link load, and you should be able to see what's going on on your uh, network. Another interesting part I'm going to show you live, hopefully. Um, is this. Again, this is um, part of the PSI network, and the fancy part is this. But of course, it doesn't do much good. It just is also pretty, I guess. Um, the idea behind this is to have a JSON structure, which can be imported into other tools. And I've been asked to do that, and uh, I figured I put in the visualization with it as well. And uh, well, yeah, that's it. Another example here, again, I just don't have enough components at home to really do such impressive maps. So I'm uh, resorting again to my former workplace. And you see here a map. Those are all the buildings, because Nedi also knows which floor a device is on. And if we hover over this, we see a switch. Temperature is 31 degrees. CPU usage, 61%. Um, it's a bird's eye view, of course. It's not really meaning, I mean, to show you which uh, device you're looking at. But as I said, it's interactive. So this is actually a, a phone, which you can click on. And then you see some details on that phone. <coughs> OK, so what's, what else has been going on? So I told you there has been quite a lot, uh, prog has been uh, quite a lot of progress, actually. Um, I wrote Nedi in 2001, I started. Then um, I rewrote it in 2005 and 6-ish uh, or so. Now this is like the third rewrite. But it's been a lot of work in the background. So you don't really see what, what changed from the GUI perspective. So one thing to know is that Nedi started with flat files, meaning I didn't have means of SQL. So the, the whole logic of Nedi has been in the PHP um, GUI functions. Does anybody speak SQL, uh, understand SQL? OK. Um, this is a simple query here select star from interfaces. And as we know, there might be a lot of interfaces in a network, let's say 50,000, 100,000. So this little report reads the whole interface table. You can imagine it's ugly from an efficiency point of view, especially when you claim to be efficient with your project. Um, so when I started using SQL, I actually learned it as well. So I created a new library, the lib database MySQL. And in there, I put a function, generate query. And this function was really cool, because I could just abstract the whole SQL language with a simple query. Uh, by the way, this, this uh, report shows you the switch usage by active interfaces. So how many ports are used, which switches are full, which switches are empty, need to be uh, replaced. The new version has much more complex queries. But the side effect or the uh, improvement is that you only get those few lines back from the SQL server, which means it's a lot more powerful and faster, especially with big, bigger uh, networks. Also, I, I improved the um, usability of, of the database itself. So you can easily go have a look at your tables. You can repair them. You can optimize them. You can also do the queries directly if you, if you know how to. 
And um, this should make it easier for Netty to be integrated into other tools or to have other tools feed from Netty or at least the information. <laughs> now another um, improvement on that is that I can use join queries now which make it very easy to display let's say computers then you get switch related information the contact person, the SNMP contact person or the interface, the type of interface, the status of the interface and so on. So it, it makes it really interesting if, if you want to have a, like, like dynamic reports or just want to stay on top of a lot more things at the same time. I mentioned those events and that they, they can come from syslog, they can come from SNMP traps or discoveries found on the network. Now with this latest version I do classify those events so Based on this icon, you see what it is. So this is like a, a syslog event from a device. The binoculars show you it's a monitoring event, discovery event, does the, the radar picture. A security event um, uh, indicate, is indicated by the Sherlock hat. Traffic stuff, user intervention. So we can very easily um, yeah, distinguish things that's happening that uh, that are happening on the network they're also now they're also tied to a device so every event has an origin and usually this origin origin can be mapped to a device why i did this or where this is going you will see in a minute this is another example um, i said netty can be used to uh, do configuration backups <coughs> so here we see what went wrong backup errors changes in the configuration so if there is a lot of changes the level will be raised or new configurations that just were backed up last another aspect of Netty the border between the actual monitoring or discovery and the reporting they're not black and white they're like a gray zone so reports can also be used for interactive stuff or you can use it to actually manage the network it's not just to have them emailed or printed out so one example here with the new database structure I added a duplicate node name report it might be interesting to see sometimes when when you have um, two computers with the same name usually it's happening that the HCP uh, will give you a name and if it's the same and it's in there twice we have two different IP addresses and we can see here one is wired and one, one is wireless so also this is an interesting aspect because a lot of companies don't want users to be on the wired and on the wireless network at the same time so this might be an interesting approach and you've seen this is the actual report I can click on it and I get into the details right away Another interesting aspect, so Netty does this discovery thing, right? Um, you see what's going on on your network. You see exactly which day you had new nodes coming onto your network or other ones disappeared and new IP addresses were assigned to those nodes. And you can click on it and you see those 53 nodes that did this at this very moment. <coughs> This has been in there for a while, but it's got a lot more details now. We've got a lot more aspects we can look at from the report perspective. And also, you can see you have simple statistics on how many nodes you got from which vendor. Uh, yeah, stuff like that. Uh, there's a whole bunch in it. If you have questions, we can look at it afterwards. And I can, maybe I can show you some interesting uh, stuff if you're looking for it. <coughs> As I said, um, I have a lot more stuff covered in here um, here is a few more examples so for example uh, CLI devices which means that we can actually manage them um, with a terminal but they don't have a configuration stored in the database or devices which never had a configuration change might happen I mean uh, usually core devices are not touched every week or better not um, here is an interesting thing since I um, improved the tracking of all different details in the network, 
And uh, this actually is neither from home nor from PSI. It's in a ski resort in Switzerland. Go figure. Um, I, I tested this new feature, and I was amazed to see that we have a module with the same serial number. Now, does anybody know what this is? A direct attached cable? It's um, basically it's a 10 gig interconnection with uh, the transceivers fixed to the cable. It's uh, quite cheap. Uh, you, you can have a look at it here, or you can give it around if you want. So <coughs> I found the same serial number, and of course it's the same cable. So we have two transceivers with the same serial number popping up in those devices. So it worked. That was a good proof. Also, <coughs> since NETI is topology aware, um, I can find devices which don't have a link, or, oops, wrong button, endpoints where we do have a neighbor, but it's not being discovered. So maybe there went something wrong with the authentication or something like that. I said the reports are interactive, but um, I also, of course, want to give you the opportunity to create PDFs or, or print them out. So you can do this now by selecting maybe a filter if you want, choose what you want to communicate, include the last map or some graphs, click on the print icon, print it to a PDF, and mail it away, or just uh, show it in the next meeting. So NEDI allows you to also do the uh, regular reporting stuff. Now, I did some optimizations in the database. I um, improved overall scalability. I also changed the uh, notification routines, so the mails are being aggregated now. We don't get 100 mails if 100 devices go down. It's, it's now a lot more granular, so you can actually get notified on link changes and not on everything else if you want. And again, the whole monitoring stuff and events and everything is tied to devices. Why do I say this again? Does anybody know what this means? Janus. It's a, a god in the Greek mythology. <laughs> two-faced god, the beginning and the end. Or I, I like to see it as looking at it from two different, uh, or looking at two different faces. So basically, the whole optimization part of NETI um, turned out to be more powerful than I thought at first, because I actually was working towards multi-threading, so it would scale much better for the discovery part. <coughs> now, the first byproduct I <laughs> sort of achieved was multi-tenancy. Does any, everybody understand multi-tenancy? Mandantenfähigkeit? <laughs> so it, it basically means that um, depending on who, you, who logged in or who's using it, he doesn't get the whole view. He only gets to see a few devices, for example. So, you, for example, you're a provider, you have different customers, and you only want to have the customer see his own devices, for example. Um, with NETI now, since I did all those changes, for example, the mail aggregation rework, you remember the mails or the uh, monitoring events, everything is tied to a device. Now, if I um, lower the view to those devices I want to actually um, present to that user, I also can add it to the events, to the interfaces, to everything else. And this is what actually the whole rework in the background uh, was about. And again, this, this little function here, generate query, made it very simple to, to achieve this. So it's not always that you end up where you want to go at first, but apparently there is a little uh, little interesting byproduct. Now, <clears throat> I said you can restrict the view of devices per user. So we see here a little um, excerpt from the user accounts. You, can you could always assign different groups as a function to a user, but now you can also assign a further limitation. And if it's not an administrator, you get this function here, because it doesn't make sense really to do this on an administrator account. Now, you could also add, for example, temperature bigger than 40 degrees and give access to the um, um, caretaker. What, what is it called? <laughs> uh, the warden. Uh, no. 
Ah, I forgot it. <laughs> anyway, so the guy who looks after the AC could um, yeah, have access to those devices to see which rooms are too hot. Might be an application, I don't know, but it's possible. Uh, a little more comfort, um, since I want to make Neddy really s sort of be more usable for, for the broader audience here. Uh, because it's been a really sh focused or, yeah, a nerd tool. So <laughs> it um, was really just for a bunch of networkers. And I guess I want to open it up a bit. So there is little improvements towards that. For example, uh, a breadcrumb bar where you can go back and uh, choose whatever you were looking at before. Or bigger improvements, so it's headed towards an appliance, hopefully, um, where you can manage files. You also have a little TFTP server now where you can upload files. You can even update Netty. You can import database uh, information if you want, and stuff like that. So it, it should get a lot more usable for you. And um, yeah, you should have nice results rather sooner than later. Another thing that we, I guess, we, we see a lot more coming up, the browser uh, is more and more the standard tool. So we want to have rich application feeling in the browser. And um, yeah, it's always the question, what are you going to do about it? Do you use a JavaScript framework? Or how do you want to achieve this? Now, since Neddy has been integrated into other tools, and I really wanted to stay lightweight. Um, I'm a bit reluctant to add a JavaScript framework. But I want to have all those uh, bells and whistles. Now, I did some experimenting with uh, HTML5. And unfortunately, the browsers are not quite ready yet. There is a few exceptions. Opera and Chrome are pretty good. Um, so you see what it's going to look like. And um, I, I guess I will pursue this idea and even add sliders and, and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, more and more. So <coughs> it should be easier for other products to use Neddy within the same framework. Now, have, let's have a look at use cases. What, what actually can you do with Neddy? Um, a use case is probably this guy. He uses a, an old shell as his house. I found it uh, while snorkeling. So. Catch-22 in the networking um, area, what could that mean? It's a loop. And um, as I told you, it's working in a ski resort. That's why it's a bit um, mushy here, so you cannot read <laughs> what it means. Um, I guess it's just fair to do that. But I was testing it in the ski resort. Um, I improved this loop detection a little bit. And apparently, I found a loop on a switch. and. I had the guy looking at it, and he said, yeah, definitely, actually, there were two cables, or a cable was plugged in to port 24 and 22. The reason why they did not notify it, or why nothing happened, they enabled spanning tree, fortunately. So also with Ned, you can see that actually port 22 is blocking. So nothing happened. But I mean, if you don't know it, then you never find out. You disable spanning tree one day, and then you don't know what's going on. Another interesting case is here. Remember, those are event logs, and the, the topmost are the most recent ones. So it's the further you go down, the older the, they get. What do you think happened here? If you start down here, some guy telneted into a switch, tried TFTP, failed, completed. We uploaded an image. It was unreachable by monitoring. So all those events are aggregated. It's not just syslog. It's from all the sources of Neddy. And then Neddy, oopsie, Neddy does a discovery, detects the boot image change, quite high CPU load, which can happen during a boot. And um, yeah, obviously, the device rebooted. And it was up for seven, 60, 76, 76 days before. Um, so you can see easily that a firmware update has been performed on this device, and that's how Neddy would show you uh, what happened. Here is another interesting aspect. I told you Neddy can be used as a security tool. Um, we see here a node 
reappeared. Um, that's you, you can mark nodes based on the MAC address as stolen. So like for example, this notebook, if it disappears from the network and I don't know who took it, I can mark it. And whenever it gets discovered again, you will get a, a, an alert or an email if you want. Now I obviously did this and I can see this notebook appeared again. And on the same port, I can see it learned a lot of Mac entries. And then I deleted some events because you would have way too many up here if I didn't. And then you can see, yeah, all those new MAC addresses that were learned on that port. And then further up, the port again went down. So what happened here is that some guy stole a notebook, brought it back to the network, and started uh, ARP, um, MAC flooding. To, uh, you know wh um, what you can achieve with that? Is anybody, is anybody security? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you, you can sniff traffic from everybody else. Yeah, ARP spoofing can be detected as well. But um, there's different thresholds you can set in order to achieve that. So yeah, I mean, again, it's certainly not a, a replacement for an IDS system or, or a whole, um, I don't know, firewall uh, environment, of course. But you c you c it can help you to detect stuff you would normally you probably wouldn't see. Here is another thing. You've seen I've had a browser open with um, an eddy, which runs on a VM here. So again, we see the ARP spoof um, threshold, so to speak, kicking in, because I have two IP addresses for one MAC address. And I can see this on this MAC address. So let's go and have a look what this means. We click on this icon, we get down to the uh, node status, and on the bottom line, uh, on, on the bottom part of the page, we see the changes. So we see any IP change, we see interface changes. On the IP change column or, or table, we can see that there is different host names showing up with different IP addresses, but they're all coming from the same MAC address. And that's how virtual PC Hand, oh, forgive me for using Windows, by the way. Uh, f how virtual PC handles um, the network part. And we can see we have Neo, which is the name of my actual PC. Then I tried the uh, Poppy Linux once. And then N7 is uh, my development system I have here on my notebook. So you can even detect virtual machines behind MAC addresses or hardware MAC addresses. Okay, I was a bit fast, apparently. We have a little more than 20 minutes for questions. And oh, and this picture, by the way, is real too. I really saw a manta down there, it was awesome. So with this, I hope I can, uh, yeah, get you uh, to ask questions. Ah, <laughs> first, uh, thanks uh, to Mr. Rickley, and um, now, any questions? Oh. No? No? Okay. No? Ah. Can you track, historically, MAC addresses attached to some ports? So is, is the, uh, are the MAC addresses stored in a database? Yes. So um, let me show you. Actually, I have a little report here. Nomads. Nomads, you, you know what nomads are, right? So they move around all the time. Um, Nomad is basically the nomad value is the product between IP changes and interface changes. So the more we have here, the more the thing moved around. So if we have a look at any of those nodes, uh, ah, sorry. Oh. 
we see the node status, and down here we see all the changes over time. So apparently it was on this wireless access point until the 27th, 12th, 31. And you can define back in time where the thing was. Do you have also some command line tools to be possible to interact with your database? Mm, not really. Um, you can basically, the easiest way is to have a look at the database structure here. And then uh, there is some templates here where you can get some information out of the database. Uh, And this is basically the, thump, the dump of that table, but um, how shall I say, usually you just use SQL, I would say, as a command line if you want to get to the data. I haven't really uh, added anything else to that. You said notifications as email and as a message. Mm -hmm. You have some sort of trap notification? Yeah, you can basically when you monitor a device, in here, you can um, select how you want to forward an event. And then each user has an email and a phone number he can uh, put in. And then, um, yeah, the, uh, those events will be forwarded accordingly. It's, it's fairly simple, it's straightforward, it's nothing uh, really fancy there. Maybe one point is that since Nedi is aware of the topology, you can add dependencies to a device. So if I'm gonna make a quick example, let's take some switch, start monitoring. So we go to the monitoring page. And um, we see the neighbor is this distribution switch. So we can add it as a dependency, meaning if this distribution switch goes down, the switch won't be monitored anymore. And you can do this automatically. So if you have a list of devices, you can do this automatically. So maybe that's an advantage of knowing the network topology. And that's actually what other tools also use uh, when integrating NETI. Does Nady, um, for discovering the topology, take into account all port channel, all trunks, uh, and so on? So yeah. Unfortunately, the implementations on the vendor side is not always that consistent. But uh, I do my best to work around all possible scenarios. <coughs> Um, do you have any idea how big the network can be? How many switches and routers there can there be so that Nady still scales? Um, right now, I do the scaling with um, the discovery interval. So f since it's a single thread still, not like cacti, which has like a really powerful polar, um, it's limited that you cannot do a discovery every five minutes on a network with 5,000 devices, obviously. but. I know that even in Germany there is a network close to 3,000 devices being discovered by Nedi. And uh, this user actually made the multi-threading manually. He starts threads with cron jobs and um, lets them run in parallel. So that's how the scaling can be improved. But this will be the next step, I guess. Um, the PSI network is close to 400 devices. And we're doing a full scan every hour. 
So meaning we get updates on all the nodes, the counters for long-term statistics. Um, yeah, so that works fine. It, it has like 18, 20 minutes for this amount of devices. Can you use Nedi um, to to do things like leak detection, network leak detection, like uh, maybe Lumeta IP sonar is doing? Sorry, I didn't understand. The Can you use Nedi to uh, detect leaks in your network? So Le leaks to other networks? Leaks. It, it depends. <laughs> um, I guess you could find, I mean, Nedi reads all the uh, IP information of a network. So for example, you can have in the device section network distribution, you see all the networks. Takes a while, it's apparently a slow virtualization. Mm, or not. Ah, okay. Um, so you see here, you see all the subnets and where they are on, on the router. So also you should be able to see even routes or if, if it's a subnet that you, uh, you're not aware of, you probably can identify in official connections if that's what you're looking for. Mm. Um, uh, if it can mark unknown networks, so networks you have not defined before, and it says, "Oh, I found a network I haven't, I haven't seen before." So, is this one of yours, or is it, or isn't, is it a foreign network? Not, not yet, but it's a good idea. Uh, shouldn't be that hard to add. So, yeah, I guess this could be an uh, an interesting addition. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> <coughs> um, how fast are you into the inventory thing of devices? For instance, uh, Cisco has a chassis, has uh, modules. Uh, can you read out the serial numbers of the modules, the type of module, what it is? Um, oh, yeah, I see it. Okay, thanks. There is more. <laughs> Wait a sec. Um, so basically, I can read the device, uh, the modules, and I should also be able to read transceivers if they provide a serial number. And some other guy wrote actually an extension which connects to Cisco and checks the serial numbers against the contract. So. Uh, yeah, there's been quite some work, but um, I haven't really pursued that. Um, but yeah, if, again, the device is consistent enough with providing the information, I can read it. But unfortunately, sometimes you get the transceivers, sometimes you don't. This, it's not reliable to this level, but modules, definitely. Nelly also provides a, um, a simple stock management in here. So you can add devices, for example, to your stock. And if it's discovered on the network with the serial number, it will update it and tell you what it's become. And then you, you can change the status to act. It will change the status to active. And then if you take it out again and put it back in stock, um, you, c you can mark it appropriately, uh, accordingly. Uh, so basically, it also helps you for the lifecycle management of your network infrastructure. Are you doing uh, discovery and monitoring in the same run, or you differentiate? No, actually, the discovery is something you would start in CronTap. It's a, it's actually in Perl. I, if it, if it was that, um, actually, I can show you the architecture if you want to see it. I didn't know if, if you were interested. So basically here you have services, and I told you it's supposed to be uh, appliance feeling. So here is the syslog daemon. You can turn it on. And here is the monitoring daemon. 
And they're all written in Perl, by the way. Um, let me do this, one sec. Told you I've been here before. Um, okay, by the way, since you're at it anyways, Okay, that's me. I didn't want to show you that. <laughs> that's one of those particle accelerators. That's a scientist in one of them. That's the outside. And that's the whole uh, home of Nedi, if you will. And what I wanted to show you is this. So basically, everything revolves around the back end now, which is the MySQL database. The discovery, as I said, is written in Perl uses a few text files for the configuration and of course sources like the uh, MAC address vendor list and then we have NetiConf which is also used by the front end and the RRD databases which is also of course used by the front end which is written in PHP and we have some more um, files that are being generated dynamically for example the maps so if you generate a map it will actually generate the PHP script which will return the picture so that's how my mapping uh, stuff works so this is pretty much it and um, in addition to the discovery you have the monitoring daemon and the syslog daemon and a little trap handler which also can populate the event table um. Using um, Nidhi, uh, would you say I could completely replace my Cisco works? Um, oh, I'm being recorded, so I'm really careful. Now, there is people that would say that. <laughs> <laughs> I guess Cisco works can do more in terms of like firmware upgrade, automation, centralized configuration, for example. There is some basic features in Nidhi. But um, we didn't work that way. We, we always did the configuration manually because it's just the way we worked and uh, had Nedi assist us. So it's a bit of a different approach. 